Doodle Bugs, it's Liddy Doodles here. Today I'm going to walk you through building a nice, simple indoor habitat for red pandas. And we're going to do red pandas for a couple of reasons. One is that they don't require a lot of space, and the other is because they make a really cute addition to your zoo. I just absolutely love them. But they only need 220 square meters of land and 40 square meters of climbing area which makes it very, very easy to wrap it all up in a nice, neat, tidy structure. So you're gonna start by going to Construction Tools and click Architecture, Walls, and I'm gonna start with brick walls because it matches the staff facility that I already have in the zoo. And your walls are four meters high by four meters wide, which makes it very easy to measure things out. And as soon as I place this, you'll notice this little orange box pops up says editing group six. And that means that this building that I'm working on is group six and anything that I add while that orange message is up there will be a part of the building. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the guest viewing area and I'm gonna make it two blocks long, which is uh, eight meters by six blocks wide. And that'll give them a nice, ample viewing space. And real quick here, take a look at this. There's two sides to the grid, so make sure that your walls are lining up. Now so that my guests can view the pandas, I'm going to need a window, so I have brick large window here, and just tap Z to rotate, line it up, and off you go. Now you'll notice this isn't quite lined up with my path and I would like it to be, so I'm going to kind of get a better view of it here. I'm going to exit editing the group, and now the whole thing is selected as a group, and I can move it. And I can either hold down Z and rotate it until it's right, or I can tap X, tap X again, and it'll give me the option to rotate it this way, which gives me a little bit more control. So I get it lined up just about right and I can get back to work. So I just click it, tap R, or the pencil key right here, this is enter group edit mode. And now I'm going to work on the actual panda enclosure. Now pandas only need 220 square meters, and each of these blocks is four meters. So if you're any good at math, or if you, you know, just know how to find the area of a space, it's pretty easy to calculate. And put it simply, all we need is to go three blocks up and six blocks over, and we'll have a large enough habitat for our pandas. By the way, if it ever gets dark while you're building, just tap the L key, and it'll turn on a little light for you. Now, I'm not going to put a wall piece here. What I'm actually going to put there is a doorway. Where is it? There it is. Brick wall door that down there and that will be how my staff gets in and out of this facility okay doesn't look like much yet but we'll get there now you see how these brick walls are basically just walls with a hole in it the panda is gonna hop right through that it's not gonna stop at all so if you have new world or classical themed uh, architecture researched you can go and look for glass and you'll have an option, the glass house wall, which looks like this. Or I prefer to use the glass modern wall. And you can just line it up with your brick window. Make sure that all the pieces line up. And you have glass windows. So now for the actual habitat, I'm going to add a couple of architectural elements. I'm going to put a sleeping platform right here, kind of a little den for my pandas to live in. So I'm going to clear out my search bar. I'm going to look for painted brick. Here we are. I'm going to go with the two meter high wall that's half as high as the regular walls. And I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm going to put one here, and put one here. And then I also want the arch. Actually, 
actually, this didn't have to be a half wall. It could have been a full one. But I'll just leave that the way it is for now. Okay. So now to make it an actual den, I need to go to roofs and floors, flat roofs and floors, clear out my search bar because what I want is the log floor, which would be right there. This is in the African theme, by the way, if you're looking for it. Just hit Control D to duplicate a piece that you want to repeat somewhere. Ta -da. Now to make sure the pandas actually want to go in there, go to Habitat. You'll notice I still have my orange message up here saying I'm editing the group, so that's still going on. Beds and shelters, and I'll put some straw up there, and that'll make them want to go up there. And to make sure that they can get up there, we'll take this uh, climbable platform, tap X. I'm actually going to make a little landing area just outside. You don't have to be as precise, you don't have to do this exactly the way I'm doing it. This is purely aesthetic preference, just how I want it to look. Feel free to get creative and do your own thing. But it will need a ramp of some sort so that they can climb their little panda butts up there. Kind of hard to see. I'm gonna pan down. Oops, I just lost it because I navigated to terrain before I actually plunked the piece down. But no worries, I can get back in there. I can fix this. Tap the R key, select the piece, Control D to duplicate. Another thing you can do is you can hit Control X and that will duplicate it and put it into advanced mode. It's a very handy tool. Help you line things up a lot better. So I line that up again. Scoot it. That was the wrong one! <sighs> I'll get there. I'll get through this. I have a ramp they can get up there. Now, as I said, pandas like a lot of climbing space, so you'll want to put in a lot of these climbable elements. And that could be a lot of fun. Just kind of have them lead all around. Pandas have lots of climbing area. They can go all the way up and around. And additionally, they consider any trees in their habitat to be climbable as well. So you just select some trees that are appropriate from their biome and continent. Broken cherry is a great one because it's just like it just looks like something that should be climbed. Let's find a cool place to put it. I'm gonna line it up so they can just 
just hop from one piece to the next. Now when selecting foliage, make sure you don't pick anything too tall because you're going to put a roof on this and you don't want it to poke through the top of your roof. It won't hurt anything, but it'll look weird. And I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to that, so I really try to avoid doing that. There's the tree I'm looking for, the Himalayan birch. This is a lovely tree. It's very interesting to look at, but it's also very compact. Fits in a small space. Red pandas like lots of coverage, so you don't have to worry about putting too many plants in like you do with some animals. They're quite happy to live in a forest. Now, if you go to rocks, you'll notice that there's no rocks here. It's because we have the continent selected, so if we get rid of Asia, the rocks appear. I'm going to actually put in a little water feature inside of this habitat, because I think it makes things look really aesthetic. So I'm just going to pick a flat rock to start with. Pillars make a good border, so I'm going to scoot in here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to kind of lay out a border so it looks a little bit like a pond. Some of these are pretty big. It's up to you if you want to use them or not. I think I'll pass on that one. And I'm going to build the back of my water feature. Let's see. Again, you can tap X. To control exactly where things go. Once you do that, it'll just automatically place a new object every single time. Let's see, uh, where's the rock one? I think that's the one I want. Oh, that thing's huge! Maybe not that one. Okay, I was wrong. So wrong. If you don't want advanced mode, tap M. It'll switch to move mode. So, scoot you in, lift you up. Scoot you over. Let's switch you to a slightly different rock. Tap to place it. And then right click to exit out. Okay. Oh wow, look at that. There's some Pandora rocks just floating. Okay. Let's make that look a little less silly. Control can scoot things along. side to side or front to back. Z will rotate. And shift, of course, lifts it up and down. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to construction. And down here it says special effects. Waterfall top. It's just a little water feature, so I'm going to go with a half meter. Make sure it's sitting level, because otherwise it'll look weird. So here's the top of my water feature. And waterfall midsection. Here I have parted. 
some mist. Now this isn't water that the animals can actually drink, it's just purely for my superficial benefit. So we're going to go to nature. Let me make sure I have Asia selected again because I want to keep this appropriate for the pandas. I'm going to choose some small plants to place around the base of the water feature. Another thing you can do that the animals seem to like is if you have the option of putting ivy, you can put ivy over the viewing area to make it feel like they have a little more privacy. Now you see how it's snapping it to the middle of the wall piece? It's because snap, position snap is on. I uncheck that and now I can move it wherever I want. Let me turn on X. By doing this, the animals will feel more sheltered, less exposed, and your light's likely to get that little notification that says, Ren Panda is stressed. Just like with the uh, foliage and the rocks, you're going to want to place the necessities before you put the roof on. So, so you'll want to go back to the habitat tab, select red pandas, and put down a place for them to eat and to drink. Okay, pretty happy with that. I'm going to add a little design element. Let's see. New world lights. I'm going to select dark red. Now I'm going to go to architecture, I'm going to go to some pitched roofs there, and this time I'm going to go with the glass house, because that's the one I like the best for a roof. You have 2 meter, 4 meter, and 6 meter. I'm going to go with the 4 meter arch. That gives me lots of room for my trees. And then you just select the four meter arch to match. Z to rotate. 
control to just slide things along on the same axis. All right, so now that I have those, I have this open area at the top. I go to flat roofs. Glass house roof flat. Just shift to lift it up into position. If you decide you don't like how something looks, tap, delete, and fix it. I'm going to do one more thing. Come in here to take this. So the guest area is the next step. I like to lay down path as I go, but if you lay down path, you can't move it with the building. It'll be separate. So if I tap paths, my little orange message went away. Anything I add now isn't going to be a part of my building. So for now, I'm going to focus on finishing this up and then we'll lay the paths. So every viewing area should have some educational displays. Position snap back on. I'm going to put one there right on the Red Panda's sleeping platform. So I have three of them up. I like a little overkill with my educational items. Position snap doesn't work as well with the speaker because it wants to put it in the middle of my windows so I'm going to turn that off and put it up here. And then uh, some ambient music will make the pandas happier, so I'm going to put a speaker in here. Oh, let's see. Let's take a look at the ceiling. When I tap that, I can go to Asian Forest. That'll make them feel nice at home, right? And then I'll put one over here. This one, crickets. Okay. Now there should be a roof on this. Just because I want there to be a roof on this, not because there has to be. But your guests will actually appreciate it if the weather's bad, having a place to get out of the weather. So I'm just going to select a flat asphalt roof, keep this simple. And to make this a little bit more realistic, you wouldn't just have this ceiling floating here in empty space. You can go in and you can pick some architectural elements that will kind of flesh it out. Alright, now the last and perhaps most important step is to actually make this into a habitat. And to do that you go to barriers. A little orange message went away, but that, that's okay this time. We're not worried about that. And you're going to select the null barrier. Not concrete, not glass, not any of this null. And the only part you really have to make sure you line it up on is this little door that you made. So you just line it up with the wall. And then the rest of it can just be kind of willy-nilly. It doesn't have to match up at all. And this seems to make the guests feel like they're actually in the habitat with the pandas, which makes them a lot happier. It's like having the benefits of a walk-through habitat without the drawbacks. All right, so now, right here, where we put it over that little door, we choose our habitat gate, and then we just line it up. Just like that. All right. So now, I just need to go to animal trading. And because I'm in sandbox mode, I can get pretty much anything I want. If I scroll down, I should find some red pandas. Right 
right there. Adopt. Adopt. I'm gonna go ahead and send him to my habitat. And now I'm going to lay the paths for the guests. So choose your path. Click align to grid. Get the grid from your building. My panda just arrived. I can see it through the little window. Deselect grid. And now I can Now my guests can get in to see the pandas. Make sure you place your donation boxes. I'm going to switch to this viewing mode. I'm going to put one over here. Oh, my first guests already arrived. One over here. I'm going to turn on my educational boards and my speaker. Crank that volume up so everybody can hear it. Red Panda sure do draw a crowd. Oh, I forgot something. Animal is not in its ideal temperature. Okay. So Red Pandas, if you go to the Zoopedia, they'll tell you they like temperatures between 0 and 29 degrees Celsius. I'm in a grassland habitat, so it's hot as balls. So I need to go to habitat, select a cooler. And you see, once I mouse over my building, it says select to add to group six. So it just automatically brings up my editing group six button. So that's going to make it zero degrees Celsius by default. I don't need it to be quite that cold. Let's go 10. And I know that's not going to cool the whole habitat. So I'm going to put one over here. I'm going to duplicate it so I don't have to reset the temperature again. And we'll put this one inside of their house, because I like to sleep in an air-conditioned room. Why wouldn't they? Okay. Now let's try it. Did I just do that thing where I boxed up my panda again? Oh, you butthole. Unbox my panda. Now, if you ever want to know if your animals can use and access all the things you've given them, you can go to your heat map. Just select one of your animals, tap the H key, or click the heat map button. And, let's see, habitat, traversable area. Oh, look at a plane in the box. So... They can get all the way up here. Just with the stuff I've already given them. If you add an object that they can climb on, you should see a little green line appear. Like so. It shows that they can get up there. And there you have it. You now have all the tools you need to build your own beautiful indoor habitats for a variety of adorable animals. If there's a specific species you would like me to help you design a habitat for, please just let me know and I'll see what I can do. For now, that's it, and I will see you next time.